Hey everyone, Cyber CDH here. Hope you're doing really well. Um, today we're going to talk to you about the topic of threat hunting and in particular threat hunting in the wild using a platform that I recently came across called Inquest Labs. Uh, a real fantastic platform that helps answer the questions that I get asked most common, which are firstly, where can I get malware samples from that are interesting, that I can analyze, I can download and play with to kind of sharpen my skills as a malware analyst. And then also secondly, how can I keep up to speed with the latest tools and tactics and techniques that bad guys are using to target various environments? Well, this platform is fantastic for meeting exactly those requirements. So we're going to take a bit of a deeper dive into what inquest is all about how it works and the kind of benefits you can get from it as a malware analyst so let's dive right in so we can see here this is the main GUI and in fact what I'm going to do first off I'm going to tell you how I found uh, inquest uh, labs in the first place let me flip over to virus total I was looking at a particular doc file a malicious doc file which a colleague had sent me uh, which looked pretty interesting but they were struggling with um, the visual basic so to analyze the macro code so they asked me to take a look first thing I did it was a document very similar to this one I stuck it in virus total had a look to see what what the deal was from the AV engines and you can see here the usual stuff you get it's probably an emotet downloader you can get various details from vt you can see some relational behavior from some of the uh, iocs you can also see a bit more details about the behavior and analysis and more importantly the community tab here has a few things populated and you can see in the middle there was some analysis provided by inquest labs uh, so some metadata stuff as you'd expect uh, there's also a link to uh, the actual file uh, on on labs.inquest.net and then what's uh, kind of caught my eye were these tags here so we can see it's malicious there's macro execution coercion so they've done some analysis that the, the um, inquest engine has done some analysis here and determined there's coercion to enable macros uh, there's also suspicious document variables it's a document with a few pages uh, and also there's a startup hook within the macros as well so that got me interested i was thinking well this isn't just you know a sandbox or is, this isn't just kind of pulling out um, heuristics from virus total this is actually doing a little bit more analysis and presenting it in a different way and so if we go to uh, this particular link here on labs.inquest.net you can see actually the usual metadata stuff as you'd normally expect uh, and here are the heuristics that we spoke about just then document with a few pages startup hooks um, suspicious document variables etc and then more importantly if you scroll down a little bit you can see that actually uh, inquest labs actually extracts for you the context uh, and the content if you like of the actual word document itself so i know this looks weird and wonderful but this text here is actually appears in the body of the word document also what i found really cool is it it pulls out the image so the macro coercion that was used here so this is the coercive image if you like that's in the uh, the body of the document as well it says you know you can't uh, the action can't be completed please enable content that kind of thing and also they have an OCR view as well so you can actually copy and paste and extract that text uh, if that was of interest to you and again even better extracts all of the embedded logic so the actual visual basic all of the VBA code again is all extracted for you here into the this uh, really really nice GUI where you can just literally copy the content you could put this into your text editor if you wanted to do a bit more analysis on it so I would put it into sublime for example just color, uh, have its syntax highlighted as well uh, and then you could uh, analyze the code and we'll dive back into this in, in just a second uh, also as well a little bit more metadata but what I found most cool about this platform is the fact that look at this it's got a download button up in the top corner here so for those of you who um, use virus total and you can look at files on virus total that's great but you can't download from virus total unless you've got a virus total intelligence key and they're pretty expensive and so just I guess a little bit about how inquest works here um, so if we go back to the initial view the initial dashboard of, of inquest labs uh, we're in what we're in is this deep file inspection area uh, and so deep file inspection if we go into it this is the core engine uh, of, of inquest labs this deep file inspection engine and essentially what happens is they 
um, Inquest have built up a corpus of 1.7 million files um, scraped from virus total using open source Yara rules. So they have particular Yara rules, and we'll show you those in just a second as well, which they use to go and spider and crawl across virus total looking for super interesting samples which you know display potentially malicious behavior macros with startup hooks uh, suspicious variable naming conditions all those kind of heuristics that we kind of saw before they're based on yara rules which the guys at inquest labs have defined already and they will go crawl in virus total and pull out those files and bring them into this deep file inspection engine and then that engine then gets to work it pulls out all of that stuff that we've seen here so we go back it pulls out the heuristics it pulls out the context it pulls out uh, the embedded logic and presents it to you in this really really cool ui i really like the dark theme it looks kind of hacker and leet etc but also it looks really professional and you know really simple to use so you can grab all of the information that you need uh, without even having to open a virtual machine or a sandbox to analyze the actual um, sample yourself so really, really cool. And if you compare it, I've got the sample here on a virtual machine. We can open the document uh, and we can see here. So there's the image. So we saw the image down here in uh, the Inquest Labs lab. So I get my head out of the way. Uh, and then also as well, you can see that this weird and wonderful uh, load of text here at the bottom. Well, that is actually all of this weird and wonderful stuff. Uh, so where it's like not really viewable because and even I've seen it where the bad guys will completely minimize this or even put it in a different color um, to kind of uh, disguise where uh, this malicious activity is occurring uh, in here well there's no hiding from it because they extract it uh, and present it to you in this kind of format and we'll dig into just in 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 this in just a second um, a couple of other things to note though about the the platform itself it's got a few other features this dfi feature this deep file inspection feature um, is really really core part of the actual engine the underlying uh, lab itself here uh, but also what's built into the platform is this rep db so this reputation database which is an aggregate reputation database and what that means is it pulls in uh, and we can see here it pulls in from a, a multitude of different sources public domain reputation feeds and it pulls together all of these indicators of compromise uh, so you can have a again a massive corpus of indicators to go searching through to look for any reputational hits so you can see here if you were to search for a particular url you can see that this one uh, appears in uh, the url house uh, threat feed and you can do some associated pivoting around that as well and there are literally millions you can see here nearly 10 million artifacts within this database to search from so a huge corpus of um, of artifacts in there and then also very similar as well the ioc db so from the 1.7 million files that inquest have gathered um, they obviously extract iocs from that as well and from their threat and jester uh, network and they collect them all together here and we've got 315,000 artifacts iocs in this database again hashes um, whatever, uh, all, all, all kind of uh, IOCs that you would normally expect, URLs, domains, YAR rules, etc., that you can go searching for uh, and match to see whether you've got any potential indicators uh, that cross-reference into different campaigns. Fantastic for hunting, fantastic for uh, malware initial assessment as well. But back to the DFI light side of things, what I also really like is you can see here that this is all this is a live view of what is in this database uh, and as I say you can download from this database and there's 1.7 million files 210 million artifacts um, within this particular corpus and you can see the categories or the subcategories of files um, that are populated here and that, these are based on the various Yara rules that uh, inquest have got defined so maldoc hunter is a Yara rule keyword hunter excel4 hunter etc and you can see the types of files. I love the way it gives you the size of the code, uh, i.e. the macro code, the context, which is the body of the file, uh, the OCR text count as well, and also the metadata size as well. But what's really cool is you can kind of filter. You can turn off unknown, so you can just look at stuff that they know is malicious. This plus uh, here is the virus total AV positives. So you could score them by the lowest or you could score them by the highest. Uh, that's a really useful feature as well. So if you're doing some hunting, 
incentive for uh, malicious campaigns which were maybe not that prevalent in the wild just yet, you might want to look at stuff which is malicious but has pretty low detection. And then they also have their own weighted score as well. So inquest based on the heuristics that they've defined, they will add their own score. So not just the AV engines, whether it has detection, but how kind of malicious is this file um, from inquest's point of view? Does it have stuff that's in their rep DB, IOC DB, etc.? So you can see this one here. Uh, it's got a low score, uh, but it's still got uh, you know some malicious tags, malicious behavior. Um, it's got some metadata in here, but not so much code. Probably not something to look at too much. But this one further down, it's got four hits on virus total. It's got a score in inquest of two. It's got 45 kilobytes worth of macro code here. And so you could actually dig into this. You could click into it. It's got an auto starting uh, Excel sheet. XL4 macros, well, that just stinks to me, if I'm honest with you. So that would sound like, you know, a certainly a malicious file, but doesn't yet have much detection. So this is where you can get to the sharp end here of how bad guys are maybe testing out their samples before they're distributing them in the wild, or they're using techniques which are not really picked up by the AV, enders, AV vendors. So you've got kind of, you know, a, a, a front end view there on new techniques and new um, targets that might well be beneficial to you to go uh, protect in your own environment. So let's go back to our file that we had a look at here anyway. Um, so what I'm interested in, first off, is when I see this weird stuff uh, in the body, the content of the actual file itself. I mean, you can go into the macros as well, uh, but actually you can see we've got um, so a document open routine here in the Windows form side of things. We've got a form that's got a load of code as well. And then we've also got a module. So there's three kind of sections of code here, um, but all of this is included in the stuff that we extracted already from the inquest labs. So that's great. What I want to search for, though, what I don't want to do as a malware analyst, if I want to pull out the indicators from this particular file, I don't want to go reverse engineering every single line of code here and analyzing what all of this stuff does, because I'll guarantee you now 99% of this stuff will just be noise and is there to throw you off. So I want to start with an end goal in mind. I want to start with working out like what I'm interested in finding out. I want, and for me, I want to know what that stuff in the uh, in the body content equates to. So I'm going to search for content and I can see here that the file, uh, which is if you go back to our virtual machine here, you can see the, the Microsoft Word object is called this BMSHL QQ whatever, whatever. Uh, and so if we go back here, we can see that that dot content is set to this variable here. And then that variable, uh, and so what I can actually do, let me go back to inquest and we'll copy this out because we'll need it in just a second. Let's open up, oops, let's open up a new tab here and we'll paste it in. Uh, and so what we're doing here, let's go back to our content, where are we here? So it gets set to this variable here and then it gets passed into, uh, it gets plugged into this variable. So it takes the rightmost uh, value of that text uh, all of it minus uh, the length of one. So that means basically it takes everything except for the first character. So that's that lot there. Um, and then that uh, particular variable gets passed to this function here. So I'm, I'm already, you know, 300 or so lines into this code. I've not analyzed, I've analyzed two of them, I think so far. So it gets passed to this function. Let's have a quick look and see what we can work out what this does. So that's down here. It takes one argument, which is this thing. Uh, this uh, The argument gets passed to clean string, which just removes any non-principal characters, which gets stored in this variable. That jumps down to here, and we can see that the um, uh, that particular argument is, the text is split using this particular string. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use my friend, whoops, type it in properly. Use my friend Cyberchef. Let me clear my previous recipes here. And what we'll do, where's it gone? Come over here, we're gonna get my text, put it into Cyberchef, uh, and then we go back. It was split on this particular portion of text here. So let's do that ourselves. We can replicate that in Cyberchef. We'll split it on that delimiter. We'll join it together. And we can see here we've got uh, PowerShell dash encode and then some weird and wonderful um, encoding. And now if you know anything about PowerShell, this encoding is base64. So we can open up our friend Cyberchef yet again, and we can paste in our base64 code. We can do from base64. We can then remove null bytes. And we've got what looks like more readable PowerShell code here. But the stuff, it's a bit noisy. They concatenate stuff. So you can see here, you just have to kind of eyeball um, what we you know, have to kind of get rid of. So we can see this plus 
uh, sorry, there's um, quote plus quote. So we'll do find and replace and get rid of that as a string. Change that from regex to simple string. That gets rid of that, some of that as well. Uh, and then let me see, is uh, we can get rid of, we can do the same thing if we just find all the, all the joining mechanisms and get rid of that until we've got something a little bit more readable. Uh, let me see that one as well done and then maybe this thing and we just if i'm honest i'm eyeballing this as i go to keep going to see whether i can get something more readable so that looks a bit better i'm interested in extracting the um the iocs here from the from a domain point of view so i want all of the urls and you can see there's a few there's a few urls in here if i get my head out of the way again you can see and they're split by um a star character so i can do that as well i can split there we go the delimiter is a star and then i'm gonna use cyberchef again to extract the urls do that one there we go and then so we are left with just the actual uh, urls themselves so you can see there if i zoom in a little bit um so we've got quality childcare preschool.com we've got the sanabak whatever.com enkj.com etc so these are all of the urls which this particular sample is going to attempt to uh, download from and we've got all of that without doing any analysis realistically i analyzed about five or six lines of that visual basic uh, and it was just so easy to have this data at my fingertips courtesy of the inquest labs uh, deep file inspection database so i really recommend you go poking around this platform it's free to get an api key uh, from me quest so you can download these samples yourself you can play with um, the actual malicious files you can do your own hunting in your own environment I definitely recommend you having a good look through their blogs as well so they've got some real good um, uh, blogs and material here of how to um, use the the platform in depth some of the case studies and it's also a year old as well so they're celebrating with some uh, uh, updated documentation with respect to their api and this platform really lends itself well to automation so definitely jump on top of that as well um, so that's it from me get onto inquest it will really really help you as a malware analyst get to grips with some fantastic samples that you can really really quickly get to grips with your hunting sharpen your skills sharpen and your analysis techniques etc uh, and hopefully you'll be able to build some automation around it so you can find these interesting samples and share them with the wider community as well so hopefully that's of use i've had a lot of fun poking around this platform thank you to the guys at inquest for uh, for giving me the access via api key to perform these kind of downloads and uh, and for sharing in the community this this wonderful tool um, and i hope everyone else has as much fun as i do so thanks everyone if you like the video please give it a thumbs up if you loved it please subscribe and then also you can follow me on Twitter as well at CyberCDH. I really welcome your, your comments and thoughts.